Pastor, I just wanted to start uh, by saying you had a good week of uh, preparation as we prepare to uh, head off tomorrow to, to, to face a very good Maryland football team. And uh, like the focus of our guys and, and the preparation that they've uh, continued to put in. And do have a roster update. Uh, Jameson Kelly is no longer with the program, and I wish him nothing but the very best. So, ready for questions. Hey, Coach, how you doing? I'm good, Matt. How are you? I'm okay. Um, talked to Jacob Mangum for our earlier in the week, and he talked about, especially the last week's defense, he feels like there's been moments of, of strong play, but there's just been too much inconsistency. I guess from a coach and a coaching staff standpoint, how do you kind of address that? Is it just as simple as change of personnel, or do you reevaluate the scheme, or how you're calling the game? I mean, kind of what do you do to try to – I know every coach deals with this across the country, but how do you kind of fix that inconsistency that can kind of make your team go up and down too much? Yeah, I think the, the, the first thing is you go through and you identify, you know, why. You know, sometimes it was scheme execution. You know, do you, do you feel like you're maybe doing something in that situation that you – need to either change the scheme or not call that in that situation. Um, um, a lot of times it's been execution for us of the scheme in those situations. If you think it's a focus issue of a certain player um, or how that individual or some individuals prepare, you know, then there may be some, some changes in personnel if that person can't get that corrected. So to me, it really comes down to, you know, who, the reasons why you feel like that that inconsistency is being there. And I, and I would agree with him. And we've talked about it with our players and with our staff and to try and get to that consistent execution. And uh, a lot of it's been, you know, I think a little bit more of focus and, and execution have been the two that we've been focused on ourselves as a staff and trying to increase those with proper reps, you know, more reps of that, that scheme, that call in those situations and, and trying to play really good situational football and, and getting off the field and getting, getting stops. You know, we had five um, opportunities to either get a takeaway and you have the two fourth down stops. So five times where we really took a possession from them and that's what you want to be able to do. And so that was great from the part of Saturday, but then you had the, 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 the you know, the long run and then a couple of third downs where we really hurt ourselves by not containing the quarterback. And, and that, that was a theme from the previous week. So really been emphasizing that part of it as well. So it's more about why you, you have those breakdowns and then you want to be able to address that, whether it's reducing this or increasing reps on a, a certain call. Yeah, Zach. Hey, Tom. Um, Jalen Lucas had 10 catches against Louisville and then zero against Akron. I guess, what do you think led to that difference? And moving forward, what do you want his role in the passing game to be? Well, you know, I, I just think that uh, um, we want to continue to find ways to get him the ball in space. And we've said that. And, and I think that that's, you know, um, definitely a way to do that, you know, is to throw him the football. So I, I think, you know, when you see – the way um, you know he was utilized in, in that game and, and those opportunities he was given that to me is is more in line with what I envision for him and you know and so and, and we uh, obviously want to do that so just got to make sure we're doing a great job of of schematically creating those opportunities and obviously there are times when you you know based on the reads and the reactions of the defense you get a chance to get those and sometimes you don't but at the same time to me um, you know he's a guy when you just look at his skill set. Uh, you you want him to be able to have the ball in his hand with some green grass around him and an opportunity to make that guy miss in space and and go get his positive yards and, and get his get his points you know so yeah definitely want to see that to be a part of a big part of his role. Zach and Jim, um, um, obviously you know probably that a little well just as a quarterback. Last year he got sacked thirty two times. This year he's only been sacked a couple of times despite the fact I think they had some turnovers on the offensive line. They've had some guys settling into different roles now he's the offensive coordinator what's been different about maybe either how he's handled pressure how they've kept it away from him just generally how much cleaner he's been able to stay in the pocket and around the pocket this season in your opinion yeah you can see it was it was an emphasis for them to be able to eliminate the hits that he was taking and, and i think that uh you know, getting the ball out faster you know, from a timing perspective, I think just, you know, the, the depth of the drop and being able to, you know, he's, he's quick to move around and, and avoid things and, and extend plays in that way. So I think he's putting himself in, less in harm's way. You know, when he goes out and runs, you know, he's, he slides and, and, and tries to get, uh, you know, a chance to be able to, to eliminate those hits on his body. So, and I think that, uh, you know, they've ran the ball better earlier. Uh, and I think that helps take some pressure off too when you have to focus on stopping that, just the pressure you get on him. And they've kind of stayed out of some third and longs, you know, which has kind of helped 
as well. Uh, so they've just, you know, when you play better football early in downs, I think it creates less opportunities for defenses to, to get pressure on the, on the quarterback. So I think that's added to it as well. And I think that just the, uh, you just tell it's an emphasis for sure. So there's no doubt. I mean, every quarterback you play, you're trying to affect him mentally and physically and, and uh, try to, to be able to help him feel you, feel your defense, you know, both mentally and physically. So they've done a good job of protecting him in that area. And I think it's obviously going to be a huge goal for them for the whole season and keeping him healthy and keeping him, keeping him off the ground. Hey, Coach, I, I know that uh, it's going to be a tough challenge going to College Park, a, a great offense, and uh, just challenging in and of itself. But what do you – Fans, for the fans that are frustrated and, and, and one that showed his frustration last night at the coaches show, what do you say to the fans that are that are going through that frustration? Because it's, it's with, with a, either with a certain aspect of the program or whatever, what do you say to those, those people? Well, you know, I, I guess I would say that, uh, you know, it's a, it's a long season. We're building this team. You know, every week's a, a new opportunity. And uh, I think this team is – Got a lot, a lot to it, a lot of character, a lot of resiliency, and, and we just got to keep getting better, you know, and obviously on both sides of the football, offensively, defensively, special teams as well. And uh, we got to do a great job of, of growing our team, you know, each week and, and growing a young quarterback and, and, and being able to, uh, you know, allow him and help him be successful and, uh, and also be able to just say, you know, hey, we got to, you know, get out there and let her rip. And we got to go play, you know, and we got to be able to, you know, give those guys a chance to make those plays. And, and it's, it's picked in football now here on out the rest of the way. And so I'm excited for this opportunity. There's no question. It's always hard on the road. And we are playing a very good football team that's, that's, that's good in, in, uh, all three phases have athletes all over the place and, and, uh, they're well coached. So, you know, just to me, it's about a team that's going to play really, really hard. And at the end of the day, we got to find a way to win. And you go to to, on the road like this, it's going to take all three phases working together. And there's no doubt we got to play complimentary football. You know, each, each phase has to complement each other and we got to set each other up. We got to set up our offense. We got to set up our our defense for success. And then when we put those situations, we got to capitalize on that. And uh, to to me, so the the response is, Hey, we all got to coach better. We, I got to coach better. We got to coach Bear, got to do a great job getting our guys ready to play, and making sure that our guys also take advantage of this moment, which is why, you know, the focus is being our best right now and improving right now and being able to be able to be at our best this weekend. So um, Big Ten football is hard each and every week, and uh, this team needs to get better, and we need to be a continually a uh, football team that's on the rise. Thanks, Coach. Um, we've talked a lot about Haven's leadership since you named him the starter. I'm just wondering how you've seen him respond since the, since the, uh, the Akron game with the way that went. How you've seen him respond, just you know, both himself and in terms of kind of leading his teammates. Yeah, I think the response has been uh, what I wanted, which is you know, practice better. You know. Be just unbelievable at the attention to details and just continue to grow as a quarterback and, and to verbally, you know, not be afraid to be able to, you know, challenge, motivate, encourage your teammates. And, but the, but the first step is, is you yourself just preparing at a high level in regards to understanding the, the brevity of the moment, the intensity of the moment, the urgency of the moment. And, um, because as a quarterback practices, so practices the team in a lot of ways in terms of just being able to execute things. And there's no doubt that's, uh, you know, he has a lot on his plate as a quarterback always does. And so just really want him to be able to do a great job of, of just being consistent each and every day, practicing well each day and then going out and playing well. And, and he didn't, he didn't have his best performance and, and he knows that. And uh, he takes ownership for that. And just like, you know, I have to take ownership for the whole team. So bottom line is he's, he's young and growing and I've, uh, in, and encouraged by his uh, ability to to lead, and uh, I, I expect that to continue to grow each and every week. And as he gets older and gets more confident in himself and what we're doing and what he's doing, so he's just a guy that needs to you know continually get better. And this is a great opportunity for him to go on the road and and play his best football. Brian, last one. Um, Coach, you've been one of the more active schools in the transfer portal. I'm just kind of curious how much that's changed the shape of recruiting for you guys in terms of how you maybe allocate resources between going after high school kids versus going after transfers and how much time 
has it changed things that much for you? Well, you know, I would say, you know, we, we've added a new staff member, you know, to be able to evaluate the portal uh, this off season. Uh, that's one way we've uh, uh, attacked it. You know, we're still aggressive with high school. That hasn't changed. Got several guys, you know, a large number of guys already committed to, to our program and, and uh, just added one here recently. So, you know, want that to be our foundation. There's no question about it. And, and, and just bring those guys along. We got several guys that are redshirt freshmen right now that were here. We recruited out of high school that are, they're playing a major role in our team right now. And that's important to us and will always be. But I think it's uh, the portal is part of, of what we do now and, and we'll continue to per, per each position group and the needs that we have and, and kind of the age of each room. I've kind of said that consistently. I, I still believe in that. And I think I see that being the, the trend each year to be able to find, okay, what do you need when the season finishes and you know, how do you, based on guys that are going to be leaving your team for, for whatever reason, that you're able to have the right number of guys in each room that will allow you to be able to be your best, you know, and be old enough in that room to be able to, to be a really good big 10 football team. So the portal will be a part of our, our plan moving forward. How much each year will be, will probably vary, but I think that uh, high school recruiting is always going to be our foundation and we'll just fill needs and holes off of that based of where our roster is with the portal. Thanks, Thanks, Tom. Awesome. Have a great day. Elio.